so many times that when a person becomes successful, friends get jealous. <laughs> and you've always been acknowledging of my success. You've watched me come up and all this. And, you know, it's called the Judas effect. You know, the guy's your friend, but when you get more successful, they stab you in the back. And I've had, Brian, I've been, you know, Rich Dad Poor Dad is now 25, 26 years old. And I've had so many friends just stab you in the back. It's just amazing what happens. So I, I want everybody to know Brian Rose is a true friend. You find somebody like Brian in your corner, you're a very lucky person. So Brian, thank you for all these years of true support and friendship. What's your take on this latest development of the crisis you've been calling for for at least a decade? Well, I, I'm gonna promote myself here. This is Rich Dad's Prophecy, came out in 2013. And I said, why the biggest stock market crash in history is still coming and how you can prepare, prepare and profit from it. So this was 2013, but I just watched what happened after 2008. And you know, that was a repo market crash. All these crashes were happening, but the average person without financial education, unlike you and myself, has no idea what's going on. And the, going a long way back in 1965, I read this book here called The Communist Manifesto. It's only like 50 pages but it's one of the most influential books in history. You know, I hope someday I can write a book as powerful as this one. But the Communist Manifesto is the manifesto of academics. And I hate to say that because that's the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So I went to military school in New York, you know, <clears throat> and my economics teacher had me read this book here. And I go, why are we studying him when we study Keynes or, you know, Malthus or those guys or Ricardo? He says, because this guy here, uh, Marx and Engels, they're the most powerful economists in the world. So in 1965, I was 18 years old in New York City. I came from Hawaii all the way to New York to read this book here. And I go, holy, holy Jesus, my family are communists. Now, it doesn't mean they're bad people, Brian. This is where I get my ass in trouble. You know, you call somebody a communist and I'm a Marine too, you know, Marines. You don't take the word communist lightly because you shoot them. <laughs> so I, I spent two two tours in Vietnam as a Marine pilot. And so when I read this book here, I went, oh my God, communism is like Christianity or Buddhism or uh, Mormonism, whatever you want to call it. It's communism or economics is an economic religion. If you can understand that, so when I read this book here, it's only like 50 pages. I'm like, oh my God, my family communists. That, that's like saying, oh my God, I just found out my, my family are Mormons. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and you know how goofy it is here in America is my friends are Mormons, but they're, they're treated like they're communists. So that's, the, that's human nature is what I'm getting at, Brian. You know what I mean? If somebody is unlike you, we tend to want to kill them. So I read, I read this book here and I went, oh my God, what's happening? You know, we're teaching communism to our kids. So let, let me just read one, you know, what Marx says, the abolition, <clears throat> the number one aim of communism is the abolition of private property. Okay, that's number one. Number two was taxation. A heavy or progressive income tax is necessary for the spread of communism. So I watch what person does, not what they say. So this guy, Joe Biden right now, he's just hired 87,000 new IRS agents, internal revenues agents. That man, by his actions, maybe not in his, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't, I don't think he's got a mind left anyway, but anyway, he and I are the same age. And I, I act like him sometimes, but anyway, he hired 87,000 new IRS internal revenue agents. They're going after our money via communism. But the average American doesn't know that because they think, oh, I must pay my taxes. But if you look at history and, you know, you and I are both Americans, America was founded as a tax free nation. Yeah. It was called the Boston Tea Party in 1773. That was the foundation of America. And then these Nazis, commies, fascists get in there and they start teaching, oh, you should pay your taxes. I'm going, that's not what the Constitution says. Do you know what I mean? And, and so our problem, Brian, is in education. So that's why I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I don't hate my family. I respect them. Like my sister is a Buddhist nun. You know, she she could try to convert me to Buddhism, but I said, I'm a Marine. You know, we kill Buddhists, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but you know, we, we all come from different philosophies. 
And I think the word that's missing today is respect for other people's philosophies, but also as a respect for our education. What is our what are our schools teaching kids today? Yeah, well, yeah. wokeism, gender identity, is us us? You know, but no, what the heck are we teaching? Yeah. Black lives matter. Well, what about all lives matter? Why don't we teach them that? What is a central bank? What is the Federal Reserve Bank of America? But a central bank. What what is the Bank of England? A central bank. What is the ECB? European Central Bank. They're Marxist organizations. They're Marxist organizations. At the core of it, they're Marxist. It used to be a bank was just a small little bunch of guys getting around. They lend money out. And, yeah. You know, in, in in religion, and I wasn't very religious, but I was raised a Christian. They have a picture of. Uh, Jesus chasing out the bankers. You know? <laughs> that should have been a lesson for everybody. If Jesus was kicking all these bankers, maybe we should too. <laughs> I went down three times in Vietnam. I said, that's enough now. You know, you only have how many lives? You have nine lives. I got six left. <laughs> so, but anyway, I was out there killing commies and I went, oh my God, you know, we should read this book here. So I came back from Vietnam, uh, January 3rd, 20, I mean, 1973, um, two. I land in uh, Norton Air Force Base in California, and I got hit with eggs and spit on by all these hippies, these love children. You know, in 69 was Woodstock and all this stuff. The hippies were coming on. I'm like, holy mackerel. What this guy had said was coming true. Marx said that communism would hit America in two stages or capitalism. Stage one happened in 1930 when the uh, Frankfurt School sent teachers to Columbia University Teachers College. And so that was 1930. That was stage one. And then stage two happened, in my opinion, and you know, not a, is when my friend here, Donald Trump, got taken down by socialist media. What happened to our elections? What happened to our elections? That's communism. You know, as Stalin says, it's not who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes. And so, Brian, I sit here as an American, you know, a veteran, killed a lot of people, good people, you know, in the name of capitalism versus communism. And I come home to get spit on, hit with eggs. Remember those days? Hmm. I remember I had, you know, Marines had no hair and all these guys had these you know, they were under tranny haircuts and all this stuff. I mean, I don't care who you sleep with. It's none of my business. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I, I don't care if you want to swim with the girls team. I really don't care. But the girls might care. You know what I mean, like, what the heck's happening here? But anyway, so I've been fighting it ever since. And we fight via education. So you and I fight via education. You know, it's the most important thing we got. And I know you get attacked. I get attacked by the very people that are supposed to be promoting freedom of education, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. You know, what's happened to our freedoms? That's what my concern is. Small ebook, Big Impact, The Wealth Tree, the only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.